Hey guys, today I'm replacing a power jack in an ASUS N580 series laptop. This is one I do for my standard $69 parts and labor at PCRepairHelp.net. And when you try to plug this thing in here, it's really loose. You can I was actually able to wiggle the tip of the power cord in just the right way to get it to power on so I could confirm that the computer did power on before I did the repair. Um, but what's happening is that little pin that you're plugging into there has broken on the motherboard side. So you can hold it at just the right angle for that pin to make contact onto the motherboard. And that's what we're going to replace today. I'm going to take the laptop apart to the motherboard and desolder the old jack off of there and solder a new one on. And the first step to this endeavor is taking the laptop apart to the motherboard. So I'm going to remove all the screws on the bottom panel first and then remove that bottom panel. And once all the screws are out of this one, you want to take whatever your favorite pry tool is. I prefer a little guitar pick, and that's what I'm going to use to pry around the edges of this bottom panel to get it removed. Um, this one was kind of on the easier side. Some of them are pretty difficult to get out, but uh, once you find a groove underneath that seam of the bottom panel, you can just pop it up and it'll come out pretty easily. So I'm just going along in the edges there, trying to find a good spot for it to pop up and, and get that bottom panel off. So now you have access to pretty much everything. You could upgrade the RAM, you could switch out the hard drive, um, access the fans, all that kind of stuff with that bottom panel removed. And the first step here with any computer I like to do is to remove the battery first, just in case this thing were to be in standby or somehow power on. When I'm trying to take everything apart, it's good to remove the battery first. And this one just, pro after you remove the two screws, this one just comes right off from the top. And the next step here is I'm just going to remove the fan screws. And then I'm going to remove the heat sink screws. And now I can remove the heat sink and the fans. And you can detach the little fan connector there. Um, I like to take a small flathead screwdriver and then my fingernail on the other side and just kind of pry it out. You want to be really careful when you do that removal. And the same thing on the other side here. And the next step is to remove this little shield here, shielding. Um, this is shielding the wireless card and the SSD drive. And I'm just trying to get it off of there without tearing it. So I'm just trying to be careful with it. because this is also covering the LCD cable so I'm not if you rip it too hard you might rip that LCD cable connection so right there with my left arm I'm holding down the LCD cable while I'm removing that shielding and underneath that shielding there's a little sticky piece that's holding the LCD cable down so you can remove that
So once you remove that piece, you'll have access to the Wi-Fi card and the SSD. So now the SSD is out and I can remove the Wi-Fi card here and detach those wireless antennas. And once you unscrew that Wi-Fi card, it just slips out. You can pull it towards you, kind of like the SSD, and that'll come out. And the next step here is I'm just going to remove the hard drive caddy. That's where you could put in a, like a expandable two and a half inch drive. And so here I'm just going to detach the I.O. board cable. And it's a little bit sticky there so you just want to peel it up. And now I can detach the keyboard and the touchpad and backlight and all that stuff in the speaker. And here I'm going to remove two hinge screws. Uh, the hinge is going over the motherboard so the hinge screws need to be removed so you can pry up that hinge and have access to it. So now I'm going to open it just a little bit and that'll open that hinge just enough for me to get my finger under there and finish pushing that hinge up. And so now I'm going to take a little flathead and just pop up these touchpad connectors. Um, those connectors just flip up to unlock them and flip, that, flip back down to lock. So you flip that little connector up and you can pull them out. And you want to be careful here when you take out the motherboard. On the underside, the backlight cable is there. So as you can see, this little cable here. Same thing as the touchpad. You want to flip this little connector up. That unlocks it. You pull the cable out. You can flip it back down to lock it again. And so now I have the motherboard out, and as you can see, there's the broken jack. And now it's time to take it to the solder table to get this thing out of there. So the first thing I'm going to do here is add some flux to the solder points. It's good to add some flux and some solder here, because then you can get those, those through holes all heated up nicely and makes the desoldering process a lot easier. So now I have the flux on there, now I can add some fresh solder. Like I said, that'll break up all the old existing solder that's been there forever and just makes the desoldering process much easier. And now I'm taking my desoldering braid or people call it solder wick and you can just go along each one of these through holes and remove all the solder that's there. Um, now this sometimes is easier said than done. Um, you want to try to get try to use that soldering iron at all angles on here and get as much of it up as you can. In the case of this ASUS N580 um, I got a lot of the solder out of there but I still needed to use the air soldering station to finally remove it. So you'll see that upcoming here shortly. But the idea is the same for each one of these through holes. You just want to take that solder wick and remove as much solder as you can. And what I'm doing here is I'm just cutting off a piece that has all the solder in it. So then now I'll come back with that solder wick all fresh again. And this part's kind of long and tedious, but you just need to keep going on each through hole, hitting it from every angle that you can with the soldering iron to try to get that solder out of there.
And I'm sorry my hand's blocking sometimes the camera angle here. It's hard to get get the angle right for each one of these ones, but it's all the same idea. You're just taking that solder wick over each through hole and just removing the solder. And sometimes if you find that this isn't working the best, you can just go over the through hole again by repeating the process, just adding some flux, adding some solder, and then going over that hole again if you can't get it out the first time. I've had instances where I needed to go over it up to you know three or four times before I could really get that solder out. And if it's really pesky, you can do what I did here later in the video, is use one of the air soldering guns to get it out finally. But here's a good example. I'm hitting it from another angle here. I, I started to desolder from the back, and then now I'm going to desolder from a different angle. And sometimes just changing angles of that through hole can help get that solder out of there. And this is definitely, I'd say, about the hardest part of the repair is to have the correct soldering iron and tip and tools and skills to get this desoldered properly. The disassembly isn't too bad, and soldering a new jack in is pretty easy because you're just adding solder, but the desoldering process can be really difficult. And then on top of that, if you need the air soldering station, that's not something people have lying around either. So. So the next step too on these is to flip the board over. Um, I like to try to desolder from the other, from the top side of it too. You just want to be very careful around those components though in the back. You don't want to touch that hot soldering iron on anything. And that's why I trimmed it off at that spot because that hot solder wick was kind of getting close to those back components. So definitely want to be careful when you're doing that. And here I'm just going to check to see if the jack is ready to come out. Um, you can take a little bit of force, um, but it should come out pretty easily when you've removed enough of the solder. And this is kind of an experienced thing, but I could tell right away that it, it was not going to come out easy. You never want to try to rip out these jacks with the pliers like I have there. It's kind of just a way to test if it's going to come out easily or not. And it felt pretty solid when I was trying to remove it, so that means that you need to keep desoldering.
And I'm just going to check it once again with that pliers just to see if that thing is ready to come out or not. And after checking that last time, I could see that it's not coming out easily. And I could sit there and spend another 10, 15, 20 minutes trying to remove the solder more. But in my experience, this has been much easier for me to, to get my air soldering station out and just finish the, the desoldering process with that. So now I have my, my hot air soldering iron that I'm just going over each one of these points with. And the fact that it's already been desoldered almost all the way, this makes it really easy. And here I'm just taking the tweezers and I'm checking how loose it is. Um, this one comes out really easily and really quickly, because, like I said, because of all that solder that's already been removed previously. So just to finish it up this way is a nice way to, to get the rest of it out. So I'm just going to go over each one of these points. It's about 400 degrees. And it won't take too long in this case. You can already see that solder flowing. And there you go. So now I got the old jack out of there. And the next step is just to clean up those points and get rid of the existing solder that's still left in the holes. And then we can install the new jack in there. So now I'm back to the soldering station. And I'm just gonna add some solder to the points where it wouldn't come up with the, with the wick when the jack was in there. But now that the jack's been removed, those holes are clear and all that's left in there is just some solder. So, so it's pretty easy to, to do the desoldering with the jack out of there. And there you can see that little pin has been broken from the jack and that's where the break occurs. That's why you can hold that power cord at just the right angle to make it work because that little pin is severed. It's still soldered in on the board side and it's still kind of semi-connected to the jack. So you know, when you hold the tip of that cord in just the right way, you know, you'll get it to make that connection. So you can see that just kind of falling out there. And now I'm just putting in the new jack. I'm just making sure that I got all the solder out. It should fit in there pretty nicely when you have everything removed properly. And in this case, I can, I can tell that it's not fitting in there per perfectly, so there's just a little bit more solder that needs to be removed. And here I'm just taking my tweezers and I'm just poking down some of that solder. There's a couple of little spots where it just will not come up. And it just needs to kind of be punched out a little bit with that tweezer, end of the tweezer there. 
And now this thing fits in there properly. I can see that it's snapping in nicely and that all the pins are flush and level with the board. So I'm gonna take my little plier handle and put it under there. I like to do that because sometimes if you just leave it flat on the surface, it can fall through. And if you have something underneath that holding it up, you, it'll make sure to keep it flush with the board. Definitely don't want to solder that new port in and have it be slightly off and then it doesn't fit in properly. And so now I'm just going to add some solder to the new jack, each one of these through holes. I'm just going over that back voltage pin again just to make sure that solder flows all the way through the hole. And I'm going to add a little bit of flux just to make sure each one of these through holes is getting that solder properly all the way through. And that flux will help that solder flow down properly through that through hole. And here I'm just checking it visually to make sure it went through on the other side as well. And it really did. Sometimes I have to add solder to that other side, but in this case it flowed through properly. So I didn't need to add any solder on that part. And now I'm just going to take some 99% alcohol and just clean up all the flux out of that area. And as you can see here, the new jack is installed. Everything looks great. And that's it. Now you can just reassemble the laptop. And I wanted to show a quick picture of the failure here where that center pin's been removed. Thanks so much for watching, guys.